Welcome to What's Up Boats. I am Fernando Ramirez, and with me is a, a, a sad cowboy right now in Dan and Dago. Uh, Dan, before I get to you, I, I, I just I got to mention it. Uh, Chargers, obviously, uh, they just lost 27-24 and to the Kansas City Chiefs. It was a really back-and-forth uh, game. But before I, intro- I say hi to Dan, um, I remember back in, in the day, and yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to rant a little bit, but I remember back in the, in with Dan Patrick, I, I always mentioned Pat McAfee today. I'm mentioning the Dan Patrick show. Um, Dan would have this one guy, Shane Irving call in. And anytime the Cowboys would lose, Shane Irving would call in and he would just go off on, uh, on the Cowboys, on Jerry Jones, on Tony Romo, on whoever. And for some reason today, after this loss, I kind of feel like Dan Patrick, which I mean, obviously I'm nowhere near the talent that Dan Patrick is. He's uh he's one of the one of the goats. Um, no, but no. I, he's like he he would always say, I was watching the Cowboys game yesterday, and all I could think about is Shane Irving. So with that being said, I was watching this game and all I could think about was Dan and Dago. So Dan, how are you doing? I am to not even curse, I'm just irate. Don't be fooled. I'm not sad. I'm not tearful. I am irate. I am irate. Do you want me to keep going, or are we saving that for later? I mean, obviously, I'm going to give you your two minutes uh, to... uh, I'll save it. I'm irate. Let's get on, dude. This is pissing me off. Uh, So, obviously, uh, it was a a bad loss. First of all, I just got to throw it out there. Justin Herbert is a beast. Like, the dude took a shot in the ribs. He was able to come back and, and make that drive and make it almost into absolute dog, dude. Absolute yeah, he, dog. He, it's incredible on that one third down. He ends up, uh, he could run for it after taking that shot by the ribs. He could have ran for it, decided to throw it into the dirt. And you're like, Oh crap, it's four down. Then he makes a beautiful pass to Deandre Carter where you're like, Oh crap. Like he put it right in the bread basket. And you're like, so you couldn't run two yards to get a first down, but you could throw that bullet uh, in into his arms. Uh, and before I keep you guys waiting, I just wanted to let you guys know that um, that there has been an update on Justin Herbert. And, well, not an update, but um, but uh, a whole mess of uh, reports have come out from, the, from Brandon Saley that they're going to wait until tomorrow to know what's up with Justin Herbert. Uh, he has a rib, or they don't know if it's a ribs, or if he just got the wind knocked out of him, they don't know. Nah, that that's not the wind, dude. Well, that's, that's not what, the wind. That's, that's, that's what Justin that. or that's what uh, Brandon told Bridget Condon and and the other reporters there. I saw yeah, her tweet out. Feels next week, dude. Um, so she's she she tweeted out that that's what Brandon said, and then obviously Corey Lindsley Center had a knee issue, and uh, Brandon said they won't know more uh, more until tomorrow as well. So that's your quarterback, and that's your center. Um, which Dan, that's where I'm going to start with. Cause obviously I'm going to ask what went wrong. I think the one thing that went wrong is at halftime, they come out and Will Clapp is in there at center and you're kind of turning around. You're like, wait, why is Will Clapp starting there? And obviously it was because of, um, it was because, uh, Corey Lindsley got hurt. So obviously in the second half, the charge only managed in all reality, take away those seven points that they got at the end. Um, basically he, uh, they managed to score only one touchdown. Um, that's including the last one or excluding ex- exclude the last one. They, yeah. they scored one touchdown in the second half. Oh, in the third quarter, or what? in the third quarter. And that's when Corey Lind or yeah, it was in the third quarter, but Corey Lindsley leaving this game really hurt the chargers and the offense looked completely different in the second half. They didn't look the same without Corey Lindsley in there. They couldn't protect. Uh, Justin is, but that's why he was taking so many hits towards the end of the game. But, uh, but Dan, let me, let me just real quick, uh, go through this. Cause I know you didn't watch, um, uh, I mean, obviously we, uh, we watched the game and everything, but, uh, there, so obviously at the beginning of the game, uh, Kansas city punts on their first down, the chargers drive down, score a field goal, uh, next drive, Kansas city punts again, Chargers score a touchdown and that was uh, and that was the the short uh, throw to Xander Horvath. So obviously, right there, the shout out to that team. guy. I saw yeah. the stupid stat that like he's the first guy to uh, the first be a seventh rounder. Have, yeah, to seventh have, rounder uh, and score two touchdowns straight. Shout out to him, dude. That guy might be something. 
Yeah, so maybe he'll be our uh, Jikinovich or what's the, what's his name? The one from San Francisco or something like that. Oh, uh, usage, usage, I think, or something like that. Something like that. I can't remember his name right now. Yeah, but, you know what um, I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. But it was a good. Uh, it was a good. It was a good start to the game for the Chargers. But then, obviously, after that, after that first quarter where they come out after the first quarter, um, at the end of the first quarter, they come back, they score the touchdown, and then that's kind of where the offense kind of freezes from there. They were going to Mike Williams early. At one point, the Chiefs took him away. Then they start going to Mike Williams again, and then they score. It seemed like the key was when you were going to Mike Williams, good things were happening. And when you weren't going to Mike Williams or Mike Williams wasn't involved in the drive, the offense kind of went down a little bit. Um, but Dan, what did you see from the offense and what did you think about, uh, what did you think about the offensive performance? You know, my thing is I saw a couple highlights or replays or whatever, and it looked like in some of those plays, Matt Filer was chasing Chris Jones in the past game. Offensive linemen don't chase D tackles, dude. Let them come to us. You know, the offensive line is a Venus fly trap, right? Does a Venus fly trap lunge out at the fly? No, right, because he'll miss. Same with the offensive lineman. If you try and strike and you're fully extended as such, the the defensive lineman is going to easily swipe your hands off, especially as experienced as Chris Jones. Swipe his hands, and your hands are off of his. Then, on top of that, if you make that mistake and you have bad footwork, you're not going to be able to recover. That happened a few times. Like, what are we doing, dude? He's supposedly one of our best, one of our most uh, a vet player. Then, like, hey, dude, I get it. Like, you, you couldn't foresee the uh, Corey Lindsley injury completely fair. Although I had a stroke that you have a backup center who has to almost look at Herbert the whole time before he snaps or, like, as he snaps just to make sure it gets to him. I didn't like that. But, I mean, it is what it is, dude. I'm glad you have a third-string quarterback instead of trying to get someone else in here to be help us or be – or, sorry, help the Chargers and be productive up front. Like, I, I I just don't understand. Like, you do the right thing defensively. By the way, hey, wait, am I my two minutes or no? Not yet, right? No, you're, you know, but you're taking your... Okay, we're, we're going offensive line. Like, dude, come on. To do nothing at right tackle. And like you saw last year, Storm Norton was... Bl- you know who's licking their chops right now that Trey Pipkins has an injury? Max Crosby, dude. He's circling the date to when we have to go back to Vegas because he's about to get an extra bonus off of that game because he knows Storm Norton very well, very intimate, took him to dinner after the game. They're great pals, apparently. So just, just, ba- just real quick, uh, Trey Pipkins did not come back. He suffered an ankle injury, and it was Storm Norton that took over the for for him uh, probably right around the fourth quarter. Is the whole fourth quarter is when Storm Norton played. My thing is, dude, okay, you do the right thing up front defensively. You get guys, by the way, shining light. I loved our defense. That's not on the defense in either of these games, dude. I love what they did up front. Why aren't you doing that on the offensive line? You draft Zion Johnson. Hey, shout out to you, dude. But that right tackle spot is still so volatile. Why not put everything up front, dude? I don't get it. Are we just going to wait until we Andrew Luck, Justin Herbert? Like Zion. that, that. That's my priority, all at one hundred percent. You know, it's funny going back to the whole Chris Jones notion. Chris Jones was on Zion Johnson's side the whole first yep. half. Yeah, whole first half he couldn't Didn't do want anything. it, so nope. he had to switch over and go towards Matt. Which I mean, obviously, that's why you make adjustments. That's why you yeah. do stuff to exploit the weaker side. But that just that's a very impressive thing by Zion Johnson that you were able to stop one of the best defensive tackles in all of football or slow him down. I'm not going to say stop. And he decided to go on the opposite side of you because he was taking advantage of, uh, he was taking advantage of Matt Filer, but that's when he started making those plays when he started making some of those um, defensive plays, obviously um, what else hurt the, the, so there was a play in the, I think it was in the first, I believe it was in the first quarter where um where Nazir Adderley um god which one was it are you it talking was, about the zebras the zebras were equally worthless tonight Asante <laughs> should have had a pick hey shout out Derwin James way to make Travis Kelsey know who you are dude he's okay so that one 
So there was a third and four at the Los Angeles Chargers 39 where Patrick Mahomes goes deep for uh, Marquez Valdez scanling and he's intercepted. He's uh, he's intercepted by Nazir Adderley. Nazir Adderley runs it back to the uh, Chargers 34 and there's a penalty and it's on Bryce Callahan for illegal contact. But then you go back and you look and Scanling was the one that threw Bryce Callahan down to the ground and he uh, got himself open. So you're like, okay, that's a weird non call or that was a weird call on the opposite side. Then uh, the other play that would have completely have changed uh, the because di- in that in that drive, Kansas City ended up scoring a touchdown. So obviously that was just uh, um, so Kansas City ends up scoring a touchdown. And then obviously you go to the um, you go to the next play and it was on it was coming out of the second half or coming out of halftime. The Chargers went up and they scored and they were up 17 to seven. It was a Gerald. Dev- uh, no, it was a. Uh, Mike touchdown Will. Touchdown to Mike Williams. Yeah, the one-handed yeah. catch that Mike Williams yeah. had coming out of halftime. Yeah. Okay, so on the next dr- – Kansas City had the ball next. They decide uh, – in one of those, uh, Patrick Mahomes throws to uh, – uh, throws uh, throws a pass to um, Travis Kelsey, and Asante Samuel Jr. intercepts it. It would have been their ball, the KC 38, but they said that the, that uh, he had that he hadn't completed it and that it was an incomplete. You look back at it and he had his hands underneath. The ball didn't move, and you're kind of questioning it's garbage. It a bit, but I mean, it's obviously, garbage, dude. No, well, I mean, it's the, the it was the refs call, whatever. But then garbage. on that play, Kansas City ends up scoring a touchdown. So of two course. potential turnovers cost the Chargers 14 points uh, on those drives. So you have that. And then obviously, uh, Kansas City did a really good job, to be honest, on stopping the Chargers pass rush. A lot was made about uh, the Chargers pass rush. And, and, uh, and obviously, for good reason, Mahomes was only sacked, I think, once. And it was by Drew Tranquil and uh, Khalil Mack. They each received half a, um, half a sack. But Patrick Mahomes was getting the ball out quick. He only had yeah. uh, 11 Scheming. incompletions. Yeah. So, um, so definitely that was another thing that went wrong is that, uh, or not went wrong, but some of the missed opportunities by the Chargers by dropping interceptions or by, uh, or penalties or stuff like that, it, it kind of cost them at the end. And then obviously, um, I can't, I, you can't neglect it. Uh, Gerald Everett ends up, uh, making a huge catch and run of it was, uh, he has a catch and run of 26 yards to get himself in on to get his team on Kansas City's three yard line right here the charge were only down um oh no they were tied 17 to 17 charge could have taken the lead but then uh Herbert made a bad read I think it was all of it Gerald Everett was still signaling to to the uh to the sideline hey I need to get out like they were running the hurry up offense to try and get Kansas City tired and unfortunately, they got themselves tired. Gerald Everett needed to come off, and the Chargers didn't do it. So Gerald Everett kind of – I don't want to say he didn't go through his route completely, but uh, but it was just – you could tell he was exhausted. And um, Herbert threw it, and it was intercepted by Jalen Watson, a seventh-round draft pick by the Kansas City Chiefs, and he returned it 99 yards for a touchdown. So that gave Kansas City the 24-17 lead. And uh, it just looked like from right there, it, like the, the air had been taken out of the Chargers balloon. That's what it was, dude. Um, in a sense. And it was just uh, it was just a bad mistake by by Justin. But at the same time, uh, the Chargers coaching staff should have noticed Gerald and they should have taken him out and, and put somebody yeah. else in there. But Like Kansas um, City sub also, dude. The other problem was Eckler whiffed completely on the guy that yeah, was he, in. He didn't. He in, didn't. Uh, he didn't, go, face. he didn't hit Willie Gay, so Willie Gay was able to get in Justin Herbert's face. Absolute so, whiff. <laughs> so, yeah, so it was just a a bad uh, – it was just kind of bad all around. I mean, and don't get us wrong. There were some positives. DeAndre hey, Carter seems like he's yeah. going to be a, a, a up, playmaker. Up. Gerald Everett, I mean, obviously it was bad. Got to get in shape, dude. And everything. But Gerald Everett looks like a playmaker on here. Mike yeah. Williams, I mean, in a yeah. sense – showed out again in Kansas City. So that's definitely there's some positives to this offense. Uh, again, oh. Rashawn Slater was able to do well. Zion Don't Johnson looked really good. Um mm. other than that, I mean there are some there are some negatives Herbert, that the Chargers are gonna have to look dog. at. You have 10 days off 
yeah. but there are some things that they need to look at um in a sense the chargers defense uh I was really interested because I thought I was interested to see kind of how the Chargers defense would do. And like I said, in each one of the Chiefs touchdowns, there was something where the Chargers uh where the Chargers um there was something in the Chargers like the Chargers defense did something where they almost came up with a turnover or there was a flag or there was some something happened to where Kansas City was led to score. So I mean, there's positives there for the Chargers offense to be completely honest. I don't know what you think, Dan. Defense? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Dude, like, the only thing that drives me crazy about the defense, right, is you've played Kansas City under Andy Reid and have lost the division to him six years in a row, and you still can't read a dang screen, dude. Like, it's the only thing that drives me crazy. I don't know how, like, they're not prepared for the screen on every play. It seems like that's always their biggest play against the Chargers, right? But seriously, like, in all honesty, that is the only thing that uh, I'm happy with right now. I think the defense looks a lot more physical than it did last year. Up front, secondary, even the dang line better. I think I even saw in one of those, Kenneth Murray, dang football all of a sudden. I think someone had the ball over the middle, caught it, and he tried to light him up, and he got a good shot on somebody. You know what I mean? Like, I think this defense gives high hopes. Of course, there's some fat on the defense that needs to be trimmed. But, I mean, if they're going to do it, when they're going to do it, I have no idea. But this defense, seriously, it, it's for real. As soon as the offense learns to pick it up, this team's going to be scary. Um, before we before we get into that, let's hear real quick what Brandon Saley – I mean, obviously I kind of gave you a snippet. But let's see what Brandon Saley has to say about uh, Justin Herbert and uh how he is uh how he's doing he's okay um it was a tough game and you're not going to see a quarterback in any level of football play tougher and do more for their team and will their team um to give them a chance than him there's nobody that can do what he can do nobody um he showed a lot of guts he showed us what he shows every day um that we're never out of the fight and he brought us back and gave us a chance. Staley seems, I don't know. So, like I've been around him. He's yeah, dead. I've been around him. I've been around him, and I know he thinks that they had this game. I know he thinks that if only if they would have done a couple more things, like one or two things right, Dan, they were a messed up onside kick away from getting the ball back and maybe having a, a chance to win the game in Kansas City. It's always City. something, dude. That was another it's thing. It's always something, like, the guy, the guys were not heads up. Like the guy fumbles the football, and there was nobody right in front of him to try and uh, grab They're the asleep. onside kick. They're asleep, but dude. I know that Brandon. I know Brandon's angry, and I mean, I've learned, I've kind of learned a little bit about him the last year, year and a half that I've been around him, and I've learned a lot about him. And you can tell he feels like they're close. Yeah, but and by the I way, take... just real quick before we go on, for now, any criticism I have, make no mistake. I'm a Staley maniac, dude. I'm a Brandon Staley guy. I just want to make that known. I have, That is my head coach. I like him a lot. I like his brand of football. I just want it to be known. I'm a Staley maniac. But obviously there were some things that they yeah, need to Yeah, of fix. course. Of course. Of course. Um, But you can tell he he's not happy. But to me, this is a learning experience. You need to learn how to put teams away. And I'll, I'll tell you one thing. If Keenan Allen plays, this game is completely different. You, obviously, that's an excuse and everything. But yeah. if if he does play, this game is completely different. Keenan would have, yeah. Keenan Keenan would have been all over that field, and uh, and he's kind of, to me, Keenan's kind of the energizer bunny of the offense. He's kind of the guy that wills the like. He makes a big yeah. grab and he gets up and he yells and he gets excited and he kind of yeah. hypes up the offense in a sense. And I feel he's like they're a security blanket. Yeah. The, but not just I think security, the, buddy, but he was just yeah. missing. You, you can yeah. tell he was missing that. The, yeah. the offense was missing that jump starter, which the defense has it in Derwin James. Yeah. Um, the offense doesn't have that, but um, well, it's because like you, you said, tell, you can tell too that they miss Keenan, right? Yeah, one hundred percent, dude. One hundred percent. Like when you have one of your your longest tenured, I think he is the longest tenured guys missing. Say yes. one of the crucial roles, like he's a leader. Whether you like it or not, he's been here a decade, I think, right? Or how long? Yeah, a decade. You see, like, 
he leader on the team, dude. I think the biggest thing also that we've learned from the first two games is that uh, the offense looks good in the first half, and then all of a sudden in the second half, we're going to sleep or putting our heads in the sand. And what that's communicating to me is that we're not making proper adjustments on the offense. And the, like the defense is making all the adjustments, and we're just staying the same, dude. And we just – it can't happen. Football's a chess match. You got to keep moving to stay ahead of the enemy. So tonight, Derwin James, nine tackles, uh, one tackle for loss. He was all over the field. He had that body slam on uh, on uh, Travis Kelsey. Let's hear what Brandon Saley had to say about uh, the performance that he thought um, Derwin James had tonight and uh, and leading these guys on uh, on defense. No, I didn't, but it was a – Tremendous play by Darwin, giving us a chance and then giving us a chance to compete there on the goal line. And our defense played their heart out and uh, we really 100%. tightened up and uh, showed a lot of competitive fight. And yep. again, couldn't be prouder of the group. Dude, so obviously, like uh, on that one, go ahead, go ahead. You go ahead. No, my bad, my bad. I was going to say, you remember last year how it was all offense, no defense? This year, I feel like it's starting to switch. They're flying around. They're flying around trying to light people up, dude. Like, this is not the Charmin Ultrasoft defense we saw last year. I think they're a lot more physical at all levels of the game than they were in years past, dude. Years past. This is probably one of the best defenses we've seen in a good while in Chargers football. I can't even tell you the last time I've been this impressed. I just hope they keep it up. Obviously, it's week two, but I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. So I'm going to go through. Let's see. Kansas City had... Uh, let's see. Well, what, I mean, obviously that play with Derwin, he, he literally, I mean, he picks up Travis and like a Dog. grown man, he spine busters Dog. him. That yeah. one, I, I would have loved if, uh, Staley would have th thrown the challenge flag. Um, I, I, I kind of thought it was a fumble. JC comes in and he smacks the ball. Like he tries to get the ball out of his hands. And I felt right before he hit the ground, he knew the impact was coming and he kind of let go of the ball. Obviously I'm not a referee. I don't play one on TV. Sometimes, well, sometimes referees get stuff wrong too, but, Dude, uh, and they have video, they have exactly. video and they still get it wrong. It's impossible. The VAR so, guys are better. No, VAR is terrible too in soccer. So no, I'm just, okay. So. Kansas City had in the first half one, two, three, four, five possessions. They only got one touchdown out of it. So out of five possessions, you only got one. You you got one touch to one, seven points. That yep. means you scored once out of five. So that's a twenty percent. Yep. Okay, so you scored once in the second half. One, two, three, four. Five. So you had five possessions in the second half. Three. You scored one field goal and oh. one touch. No, two field goals and one touchdown out of five possessions. So that you scored one touchdown out of five possessions. That's 20 percent again. So basically, yeah. out of ten possessions, you scored twenty percent. You scored a touchdown. So that's not like literally the defense stopped them for most of the game. One hundred percent. So they scored twenty. They scored twenty points. So you only scored two touchdowns on offense. And you scored the two field goals and the one touchdown on uh, on the on the interception return for a touchdown. So literally, you only gave up two touchdowns in Kansas City. That's a huge win for this exactly. defense. That's exactly. a huge win for the defense. So I think the defense, obviously, for um, I think the defense came up really clutch for them tonight. I just think obviously there was a lot of mistakes, but I think it's mistakes that these guys can clean up. But man, you only gave up fourteen points essentially to Kansas City. Um, that one, I, I looked back at that play, Dan, and I know you called it a, um, you said it wasn't holding by, uh, by Travis Kelsey on Derwin, but I thought the only reason why Derwin got him on the face mask, Clyde Edwards Alaire was because Travis was holding it when he wasn't able to get a good hold of him. And I kind of went back and I saw it real quick and I thought it was holding, but I mean, obviously again, I'm not a referee, but man, yeah. you, I mean, there's, there's some positive to take away, but at the same time, there is, uh. There is some the, the offense I think was the negative today, and the yeah. defense was the no, positive. No, it's been for opinion. two games. It's been for two games. The negative, two well, games in well, yeah. a row, dude. Haven't made adjustments in the second half. Coming out like a daisical, thinking you're running the thing. It's like I I don't understand what more motion you need.
then these guys have kicked your ass for six years in a row, right? Yeah. Then the Broncos, another four and five, uh, both teams going to two Super Bowls and taking home one. Like, I, I don't understand why we haven't at, at right tackle yet. What are we waiting for? I have no idea. I guess so, we'll find out. Your two rants aren't here yet, so hold on for a second. I know. You're, so getting, let's me, hear, you're getting me fired up, dude. Let's hear what Mike Williams had to say about, uh, about I think he's oh, talking he, about Justin Herbert. He loves playing in Kansas City. He loves playing in Kansas City, dude. Always goes off. Oh, yeah, that's that's just the mindset and the toughness that he have uh, to be going through with, with whatever he was going through and to stand in there and make plays. Uh, that's what, that's the quarterback that leads us, and that's what we like. I think well, that's one of the things that Justin's earned in these last few years is the respect and the admiration of his team in the sense of the guy goes out there, he takes hits, and he yeah. get, just gets right back up, and he goes out there and he yeah. plays. So that's a, that's a big positive for, for Justin and for the team moving forward. But you, in a sense, you, you got to fix the mistakes on offense. I mean, there's times where they come. And I, it's funny because today I saw on Twitter where people were crapping on Brandon Saley for not going for it more on fourth down. I'm like, what do you guys want? Like, you guys were crapping on him before for not going for it or for going for it. And now you guys are crapping on him for not going for it. Like, what do you, what, <laughs> what do you guys want? What kind of cake do you guys want? Like, do you want vanilla? Do you want chocolate? What, yeah, what, for what? real, dude. But uh, for real, but I, I just you, can't, you can't have both. But um, you can't. There are some both, negatives, dude. The play calling sometimes to me, I think it turns. I think it 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 does have to be questioned a little bit, just because the same thing happened last year at the first at the beginning of the season. It, it felt like more in the second half they opened it up a little bit more, but in the first half it didn't look. I don't know. I I, I guess I I just think that they they. They should do more, but like I said, there's no Keenan, so that kind of hurts. Um, I think the Chargers need to give Josh, Joshua Kelly more snaps. I yeah. know he was in the doghouse, and I said this on the radio on a radio station today because they asked me about Joshua Kelly, and I said I know he was in the doghouse with Anthony Lynn, and I know he was in the doghouse with Brandon Saley last year, but those were those are different years. This is a new year. You need yeah. to give that kid more snaps. He, yeah. for some reason, he's able to turn a two-yard loss into a couple of, into some gains. So I definitely think that Joshua Kelly deserves more of a chance to show himself and to prove himself. And uh, and I definitely think that he uh, he deserves a chance to go out there and uh, and and keep um, and get more snaps. I just feel like I don't know. I think that. Austin obviously is running like he runs the football well and he, and he gets positive yards and so and there's numerous times where he turns nothing into something but I think Joshua Kelly has kind of until the four, until something happens I think he's kind of earned the, the that running back two those running back two snaps yep. and yep. I think he should do uh I think he should be allowed to uh to touch the ball a little bit more during the game I'd like to see a little bit more of him and Sony Michelle I mean why not keep the backs fresh dude why not put Eckler in the slot, have a running back back there? Just give different looks, dude. If Lombardi's offense is a cheesecake factory menu, I need to turn, I need the page freaking turn like it was yesterday, dude. We need to move on. We need to find a section that's going to work in the second half, my guy. All right. Before we close this out, I promised it to you and I'm going to give it to you. And with, God is my witness. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing something. I, I feel like I'm giving uh, Dom Toretto the keys to my 10 second car, and and I'm about to be uh, arrested for. Um, I took that for, pink slip, dude. For uh, uh, for being an accomplice, like uh, Paul Walker was in in Fast and Furious. I feel yeah. like oh, and the, I, I don't the know. I, what, what's another one where the the guy lets the enemy take off? Like. I just feel like I'm in a Batman movie or something, and I'm about to do something that's crazy. But, Dan and Dago, the floor is yours. Let the Joker out of Arkham Asylum. You already know, my biggest problem is up front. Why at right tackle we still have two guys we've already seen, and they've been okay and serviceable, and one just downright abysmal. We still have them there, just have pig on skates. How is your number one objective, besides scoring points, not protecting the son of Odin, God of lightning, 
Then another problem I have, if he's getting um, constant pressure, how are you not changing the play calls to give three-step drops? Chip chip a dang address or whatever you want, for God's sake. Throw a screen successfully once in a while. I don't understand either. This really pissed me off. How are you going to call on second and whatever, a, a nice little zone to the left, nice little run. Then you go back to it on third and one in the same look to get stopped. It's a joke, dude. It's a joke. The Zebras, I'm not even going to touch it because they can't let their little darling go uh, lose to the Chargers so early in the season. I'm just so irate, dude. This has been the M.O. of this franchise for years, dude. I don't understand what motivation you need, what more motivation you need. You've lost to the Chiefs six years in a row, the division. Two Super Bowls, one they've won. Before that, you have Peyton Manning in Denver beat us for five years in a row, and they went to two Super Bowls, came home with one, and we have a big old goose egg. All we have in the last freaking five, six years is – we beat Lamar Jackson in the wild card. Big freaking whoop, dude. Then we had a chance to lose to the Patriots and then go, watch them go win another Super Bowl. The The problem is the franchise itself needs to get its head right and understand, just like in games how you can't finish, that's a small club mentality, dude. You have to come out day in and day out trying to be the best. It's not enough to say it. You got to go do it. You can't just talk to talk. You got to walk to walk, dude. The problem is, in the second half, all of a sudden, we think we can just run out the clock for 30 minutes, dude. I'm just irate. I can't stand losing the Chiefs. I don't understand what more these people need to have that sense. That's why I think the biggest problem is there's no sense of urgency. Like, we're glad making it as a wild card again this year. It's a joke, dude. I'm just, you know, and the other thing, it's week two. Whiskey Sour Wednesday's back, everybody. whoop de freaking do it is what it is, dude. I don't know what more to say. It. I guess on to Jacksonville. But we need to turn the page on this OC's menu. This is getting us killed, dude. We need to go find somebody to protect the son of Odin. I don't know. But I'm glad we have a third-string quarterback, dude. I'm glad. I'm glad. Not even He's not even like a Taysom Hill. They don't even use him like that. Gosh dang it. Gosh dang it. Got to trim the fat. Trim the fat. And I'm trying not to get team. expletive. I'm trying not to bury people. Let's just let's finish out as cleanly as possible. Luke. I think you deserve a round of applause for uh for not um for not cursing. I mean, the biggest I definitely... problem is mindset. Biggest problem is mindset. You got to be Kobe and Jordan, dude. Can't be these new age athletes. You want to be friends with everybody. You have to be obsessed with championships. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, uh, I definitely agree. And, and, uh, you know, and just one last thing, one last thing to show you how far our defense has come. Everyone forgets Andy Reid is one of the best offensive minds in the game to only allow him essentially what you say. So uh, basically two touchdowns and a field goal or two field goals. Uh, yeah. Two touchdowns and two field goals. Was well, there you go. Right. What? Zebras are going to, there you go. But what I'm saying is, like, to limit them to such little points and for them to have such a, a high IQ head coach who's been doing it for years, decades, and every t every franchise he's gone to, he's turned around. Yeah, no, definitely. The and, I mean, Patrick Mahomes threw for almost uh, – he threw 400 yards last week against Arizona for yeah. five touchdowns, and here he only had uh, 235 for two touchdowns. So, yep. uh, and I mean, he tried to spread the ball around, but it just, it, um, Juju Smith Schuster, three catches for 10 yards. Um, Watson obviously had that Don't one catch from JT that, Jackson, yeah. but I think the Chargers offense is going to be all right. It's like you said, or the defense is going to be all right. It's just the offense. And, but I, I think as soon as they get Keenan back, it'll, it'll start flowing again. And, and, uh, well, that's what you hope. Get, that's what you hope. But I mean, now you have Corey Lindsley, Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, uh, and I guess Trey Pipkins, all question marks moving forward until you get a, a definitive a definitive answer on both. But like I said, there's some positives, there's some negatives. But I think the Chargers really Defense. need to learn. Uh, I think the Chargers really need to learn from this 
and look at it and say, we need to learn how to finish. We need to learn how to finish fast. And I know they know how to finish, but these are the teams that you have to beat. The the Buffalo Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs, if you have a lead on them, you have to finish them off. Yeah. That's what Bill Belichick used to do. In Bill Belichick's first few years back, I remember everybody would be like, oh, he's running up the clock or he's running up the scoreboard. Score. I yeah. didn't think it was running up the scoreboard. I thought it was more him putting the other team away and not letting the team even sniff. 100%. A comeback on them. But one hundred percent. Obviously, that's gonna that's gonna take some time, and I'm interested to see uh, uh, how they're gonna do. But next up for the Chargers, uh, like you said, uh, Jacksonville yeah. will be coming to SoFi Stadium. It'll be interesting to see the Chargers now have ten days, or basically about a week off until they have to get back to practice. So, um, and I know that they just lost, but I'm pretty sure uh, they're gonna give these guys uh, they're gonna give these guys some time off to kind of relax their bodies and. Uh, and um and and get right and everything it's, so it's gonna i'm gonna be, be interested in what'd you say what'd you say no slouch dude no 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 i'm saying what i think they're I said, gonna do is I, try and get their bodies healthy try and get themselves back yeah you have to dude and jacksonville is not gonna be a slouch so, either doug peterson super bowl oh that's what coach. you were my bad that's what you were saying yeah they're not gonna be a slouch dude Doug Peterson, no. Super Bowl winning coach, high IQ. He was with Kansas City, I think, for a bit, right? He was the OC. Yeah, manager. he was their offensive coordinator. You couldn't have learned. From, you couldn't have picked a better person to learn from, Dougie P. You know what you're talking about. Let's see what Brandon Saley says here about. Um, I think it's something about Justin Herbert. No, no, because he's Justin Herbert. <laughs> That's dang right. I love that. He is Justin Herbert, dude. I don't know if he what? says I don't know if it was like, are you worried about uh I don't know. I don't know what I honestly don't know what context it was, but he's Justin Herbert. I don't need I mean, context. I don't need context. I know what the hell it was. He <laughs> is Justin Herbert. He's the son of a he's the young goat. He's gonna be fine if you can keep him upright, dude. Good God. Can you give us his full title? Just say I want to get you hyped up. Can you give us his full title? What are you talking about? The son of Odin? God of lightning, the young goat himself, Justin Herbert. You know what's the worst part? Today, I had a good day at school. I was putting on my Elvis music. I was listening to Elvis Presley getting hyped. Had a good little walkthrough practice, team meal, everything else. And I come home to this garbage, dude. Gosh, dang it. But you live to fight another day. And the that's, Chargers, I think, like I said. I think that's the biggest lesson, right? In those moments, like the pick six, throw it out of the end zone, dude. Just throw yeah. it out of the end no, zone. No, and Justin's Live. gonna learn. Justin's gonna learn from yeah, it. Yeah, you the, have uh, to. the team's gonna have Live to learn to from fight it. another down. But like I said, for the next few days, about getting themselves right, Justin needs a rest. Corey needs a rest. Some yeah. of these guys need to rest up and get ready. Um, but definitely, uh, definitely an interesting, an interesting game. Uh, the next time that the that these two teams meet. Is yeah. I think in, they in November that. November 20th in SoFi Stadium at 1 25 p.m. That's around Thanksgiving, isn't it? Yep. The week uh I think it's the a week the before week after? Thanksgiving. No, we oh, yeah, the week before. Week before um, yeah, so yeah. I'm sure the charge will have that one circled on their calendar. Uh, but like I said, next up, Jacksonville, Trevor Lawrence. Um, some yep. familiar faces on on the Jaguars is uh Rayshon Jenkins. He was a uh, former safety for the Chargers. He's on Jacksonville. Yep. Uh, Jacksonville has some playmakers on their team. The Chargers are, are going to, like you said, they're no slouch. They're going to give mm -hmm. the Chargers uh, a fight. So Fits. it'll be interesting to see kind of how they uh, how they do. But, Dan, as we wrap up, anything else um, Anything else you uh, you want to get off, you want to say? or the, Yeah, the last thing I want to say, and everyone stop calling me an idiot. Because I say, if I don't want to start a franchise with the son of Odin, the first thing I'm spending all my money on are the five guys up front. Because I need him to have, you know, as long as he needs to throw the ball. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you're having so much pressure, have six or seven guys block, you know, the five or four guys they have. And just have everyone run rounds like the Patriots used to do. You remember that? The years their linemen would be down, they wouldn't have good offensive linemen. Like, we need to start thinking high IQ, dude. That's that's the problem. It's mindset. 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 Everyone always talks about it, but 
Gosh dang it. Gosh. Well, they have four, it. they have four solid offensive linemen. The the question mark has been that right tackle position. Like you said, the Chargers decided to not go and um and spend money in free agency for that. They decided to keep it in-house. Trey Pipkins versus Storm Norton. Trey Pipkins won the job. Um, but obviously, uh, you're not gonna do anything during the season. So no, you, the, you the, can't. that's who Unless that's you gonna trade, be. The, but we're not gonna, gonna trade right tackles. But like I yep. said, if if I mean obviously. There were some – the Chargers had some mistakes today, but they need to learn from those mistakes. 100%. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they can get over uh, these mistakes and and come out with a fresh mind against uh, against Jacksonville. But this showed you a lot. This showed you that your defense can compete against the Chiefs. Dogs. Your offense Dogs. can compete against their defense. Now the yeah. question is, can you get over this? And and uh, you have another chance at them. You need to – another thing is you need to – now that you're down – you're one, one in the division. You need to beat the Broncos in a couple of, well, obviously I'm getting ahead of myself, but you, yeah. the vision, this division is usually won by the team that wins the most divisional games. And, uh, and that'll be interesting to see kind of how that goes through. But, uh, but yeah, no, it was another, um, another interesting uh, chapter in the chargers um, in the chargers uh, story. They lose to Kansas city 27, 24, um, guys, just uh, just to let you guys know, this weekend is obviously Canelo versus Triple G. Go to Combat Compass. We had a round table with some good friends of ours, Sam Gordon and uh, and uh, Brian Salomon. Uh, we had them on. We talked to them. We broke down the fight. We also talked to Triple G. Go check out that interview on Combat Compass. Uh, obviously go check out house of horns. That's Gilbert, uh, and, uh, Vic, the producer, they, they are, uh, breaking down the Rams stuff. The Rams play the Falcons this weekend. Can the Rams bounce back? Um, they're going into this game zero and one. The Falcons showed some good stuff last week against the, um, against the New Orleans saints and New Orleans has a really good defense. So can they bounce back and, and play well this weekend? Who knows? But, uh, but Gilbert and Vic will have you covered on that. And then regular compass Gilbert, uh, Dan, Vic, the producer, and I, we go through some topics going around the NFL. We talk, uh, we talk some of that stuff, and then we have some uh, our predictions also. So, uh, thank you guys so much again for checking out. What's up, Bolts? We appreciate it so much. He's Dan and Dago. He's gonna probably go drink. Uh, I'm Fernando Ramirez. I wish. <laughs> I wish. I have to go in early tomorrow to school. I wish I could drink. I don't have that time. Well, we appreciate you guys. We thank you guys so much. And please, guys, like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you like, what you don't like. We appreciate you guys so much for checking us out. Uh, and like we said, please, um, if you guys have any questions, whatever, send us our way. We will answer any of them. But like I said, tell a friend, be a friend. We well, That's why we're called compas, because we like to make new friends. So bring new friends our way. Tell a friend, be a friend. We appreciate you guys so much, but uh, Dan, I think it's time that uh, we bow out. out of here. Gosh dang it.